Welcome back. For the next section of our spreadsheet of our 12 month cash flow, we're going to talk about income. I've often had bankers say to me, when a business comes to me, they all they have a good handle on expenses. A lot of times people know the expenses down to the dollar, but they don't understand how to forecast income. Well, while I appreciate the banker's frustration, as anyone who's been in business knows, it's much easier to forecast expenses than it is income. We have some control over the expense, expense side of our business. You can choose to have more cable stations or uh, more bells and whistles on your phone or to have more or less trash pickup a month you can make some adjustments to the expense side. On the income side, you're really reliant on the customer's decisions to spend and to come in and buy your product or service. You can try to market to them. You can try to encourage those sales. But in the end, it, it ends up being a guess. So we're going to talk about how to make an educated guess as to how much income you're going to have in your business. If you look at the um, 12 period spreadsheet, at the top where we're talking about income, it says unit, we have unit sales, average price per unit, and total cash receipts and sales. So let's talk about what's gonna go there. Um, the lines under each one are going to be the various sources of income that you have. And we're gonna group together things that um, are somewhat like and we'll separate things that might have a much different price structure. For the sake of this discussion, we're going to go back to our lawn care business. So we're going to put residential lawn care, commercial lawn care, and landscaping as our three types of uh, income that we're going to have. And we're just going to go ahead and copy those all the way down. So um, the same are they're following those same um, same sources of revenue in each of those categories. So next we're going to think about average price per unit. So a typical lawn. Now again, this is going to vary. Some people are going to have a very small lawn with not much trimming and not much other work. Some people may have an acre of land that you have to mow when you go, but let's say what's the average amount, the average cost that's going to be to the customer for you to cut residential lawn, to handle residential lawn care per time you do it. So let's just say, for example, yeah, that might be $50. Let's say you do maybe more bigger lawns than smaller lawns. You might charge a small lawn, 25 or 30. You might charge a really big lawn, 60 or 70. But let's say the average number for residential lawn care is about $50. So we're just gonna make that guess based on what, what you know as, as an expert in that field. And um, so we're gonna say that the average uh, average residential lawn is going to cost $50. Let's go to commercial lawn care. Now let's say that's going to be a little more involved potentially. Uh, may or may not be bigger, but it's going to require some additional care. So um, let's say the average commercial lawn, let's just say it might be $100 a time. Okay. And remember, for your business, these categories might be things like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They might be things like the categories like um, adult games and children's games. Um, whatever your particular business is, um, you're looking for different areas that you know you need to forecast differently that maybe have different price points. So that's how we're going to project. And just use the top ones. You don't have to use every product. We're just kind of grouping together ones that have some substantial differences. Let's say landscaping. Landscaping is going to be something you're going to do maybe once, once a year, twice a year. 
uh, for, for an individual or a business. And um, that's, a, that's a pretty big ticket item usually. There's gonna be some cost for materials. There's gonna be a lot more labor involved. Um, so let's say a typical landscaping job might average more like $2,000, okay? So your final cost, of, cost to a customer to do landscaping would be 2,000. Okay, so now we know that these are the typical average costs for residential lawn care, commercial lawn care, and landscaping. Now we're going to go up here and talk about how many of these we're going to do every month. So residential lawn care. Uh, again, now we're going to talk not only about how many we're going to do for each month, but the seasonality. So, for example, we're doing lawn care. How many lawns are you gonna mow in January? Probably none, okay? Same thing in February and even March, it's probably not, not gonna be, well, let's say, let's say it warms up at the end of March and you do two. Okay, but now April, you're gonna start mowing lawns on a regular basis. People are gonna to wanna to start having you come out and do that work. Okay, so um, in April, maybe for every customer that you have you mow their lawn once a week because it's raining and it's april and everything's growing so uh you have a customer and you're going to mow their lawn once once a week for the four weeks of the month so if you just had one customer that would be four times you would be mowing for them and potentially the, uh, your income then would be $200 from that customer for that month. Okay, so let's say, um, let's say how many customers you're gonna have in the beginning. Well, maybe that first couple of months, maybe you only have three or four customers that you know. So we're gonna say now we've got, um, let's say four customers times four times a month, you're going, to, you're going to mow their lawn. So now you've got 16 instances of lawn mowing at $50 a piece, and that's $800. And now you have in residential lawn mowing. So let's say in May, you're starting to see more a growth in business. People see you mowing the people's lawn next door and say, hey, would you mow my lawn? So now let's say for every business that you had in um, April, you got a new customer. So now let's say, you know, now you're gonna have twice that many in May. So now we're gonna have 32. So now this is 32 lawns you're gonna mow, 32 times you're gonna mow lawns, okay? So uh, once a week uh, divided by four, so you're gonna have eight, eight times, eight lawns, eight lawns every week that you're going to mow. Um, typical, you know, work week might be five days. Uh, so it's a little bit more than one a day. Certainly doable, okay? Um, let's say it builds again. Let's say in June you look up and it's doubled again. Now you have 64 times you're going to mow lawns. So you have... Um, so that's going to be 16 every week, and that's about three a day. And it, you're charging $50, so that we decided that was a fairly decent size lawn. So that's probably going to take maybe at least an hour, maybe, maybe two. Um, so if you have uh, three a day, that could be anywhere from three to six hours worth of work, including travel time, back and forth to do those jobs. So 64 may be approaching as many as you can do. So you need to think about that. As you're projecting these numbers, use logic and how it's building. You're starting small and you're growing, uh, but make sure not to just randomly add it the, as you go along because you have to think through the logic of how much time will it take you to do these things. Okay, so let's say you're at 64 lawns in June and July comes. 
Well, July in Illinois, it rains a lot. It's sometimes very hot. It's sometimes so hot um, that you actually have a drought and maybe lawns don't grow quite as much. So let's say in July, that drops off a little bit. Now we only have 48 lawns. Same thing in August. September, let's say, um, let's say it goes up a little bit. And then October, it's going to start dropping down again, just because people's lawns are going to need to be mowed quite as often. And by the time we get to November, we'll put some in, but probably it's going to have dropped off totally by then, and certainly by December. So now what we're seeing is that you started out, you didn't have very many because you were new. It grows into April, it grows again into May and June, and then you kind of peak because then weather takes over and that drops the number of times you're doing it for a couple of months, it might go up again. Um, it might drop off and now again because of weather again, and then you've got some months you don't have any income from that. Okay, so that's how you walk through this process and you would do the same thing for commercial. So let's say that's not as big a piece of your business. So um, I think the most, well, let's say you have one customer, one, one week you're gonna do a customer in March for a commercial customer. Um, if you just still had that one customer, you'd have maybe four weeks in April. Say that goes up a little bit. Let's say the same logic happens. So we're going to top out at um, about 16 um, times we're going to mow commercial lawns. And so that would be four a week. And um, so that makes sense because even at our busiest, we may have been doing um, we may have been doing six hours worth of work in a day, and now we've got four more customers to work in in a week. So it's do it's still doable. It's gonna you're gonna be a lot busier than you were, but it's still doable. So now we're gonna start dropping that off again, um, just like we did with the residential. And we're going to just, and then maybe it goes up a little bit again, and then it drops off again. Okay, so the same thing happens with commercial on here. But we had a higher, we had a higher individual unit sale price. So um, we're making more on those, uh, or so we're making more on those commercial customers. Um, those hours we're spending on that. Now landscaping. Now um, again, landscaping is going to be something that happens and this is where you use what you know about your business. Okay, so in this case we're talking about lawn care and, and outside work and those kinds of things. You certainly may have income every month. You may have, um, you may be in a business, for example, we've talked about the toy star, store. We've talked about the toy store um, that where your business may be heavy in the holiday seasons. And um, those, those times of year, um, you're going to have great many more sales than you are other times of year, but you may always have some sales. So this is where we're using what you know about your business to forecast what the increment of sales is and how many you're going to have in a month. Um, and just don't over, over project. Okay, so landscaping, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. We're saying that's a smaller kind of thing, but you're going to have some people do it. Um, you're going to have some people do it in the spring, and then it drops off. And let's say we don't do it. We may do a little bit in June, and then you don't really have any through uh, July and August because you aren't going to want to plant in July and August, but let's say September comes and there's some fall plantings and fall work that can be done. So let's say you pick up a couple more before the year is over and then there's nothing after that. So those are big dollar pieces, but they are, there are many fewer of them. And that's actually good because remember June is when you were really big, was busy with the lawn care and landscaping is going to take a lot more time. 
So those are the things to think about. Think about the full mix of how much time you're going to have available, um, because at some point you're going to have to decide where does it make sense to start adding on people, and then we'll talk about how that works. Okay, so for right right now, what we're forecasting with this particular business is that you will have you will have about forty three thousand dollars in sales. Um, in that business, you have an income of forty-three thousand. Now, this is not income to you; this is income to the business, and that number is going to vary from month to month. Okay, so let's say we don't do anything else, and we come down here and we look at our uh, look at our profit. So, looks like we planned it, doesn't it? Um, okay, so right this second with no variable costs in there, we're generating about enough income to cover all of our fixed costs. But also look at what happens on a cash flow standpoint. And to see the true cash flow difference, um, this is by month, this is kind of a cumulative number up here. But let's look at here. Okay, so in January, remember we have no sales at all, but we do have expenses. So we're gonna lose about $3,800, $3,500, then in March, we start having income to offset those expenses, so we only lose $1,400. But then we make $750 in April, we make $2,700 in May, $2,100 in June. But then in July and August, uh, we're barely breaking even, start making money again in September and October, um, drops off again in November and December. So if you're planning your income, you're going to want to have income um, more peaks and um, you, you're gonna expect those, look at those peaks and valleys and plan for that. So that when you have this $2,700 in income this month, you know you're gonna need it as you go along. Okay, so let's go up and look at, at where we are. Let's also look at variable expenses. Um, and in this particular business, we're gonna say we've accounted accounted for things like gasoline. Gasoline could be a variable expense. Uh, we're going to say we've accounted for that down in the, the rest of the form. Um, but it could be, a, you know, that's one you might want to think about. For the sake of this, let's think, and we're going to copy um, the categories we're using up here because now we're talking about the costs associated with each one. So, yes, come on in. All right, I'm gonna take it off. Okay. That video is still doing its thing. I'm still okay. running. Ready to go tomorrow. Okay, cool. I'm working on the rest. Sweet. Okay. All right, I'll see Thanks. you on Friday. Okay, doke. Thank you. Okay, so as uh, so we're looking at the variable costs, again, if you wanted to count gasoline, maybe in residential and commercial lawn care, this would be the place to do that. Um, and you might say to mow. Uh, lawn that I'm going to charge $50 for, I'm going to use $5 worth of gas. So this particular form uh, does some calculations for you. So it's going to look at this yellow field and take um, the, uh, it's going to take the dollars in this case by whatever is in this field. But let's say we don't want it to do that. We want it to take the number of times we did something times whatever's in that field. And if you're not an Excel user, you may not want to mess with all this. But, um, but if you are, it's a good way to adjust the form so it works for you. Okay, so now what this is doing is saying, let's say we use $5 worth of gas every time we, we, chart, we mow a lawn that we're charging $50 for. So that is actually now going to be a dollar amount, not a percentage. Okay, so now we, we're selling, we're, what we're doing here is saying, every time we mow a $50 lawn, we're using $5 worth of gas. 
We're not going to use that gas if we don't load the lot. So it's a variable cost. So we're going to go ahead and plug that number in here. Okay, and we, we just plugged it. All we had to do was put it here, and once we had that formula, it calculated all that for us. So it's saying, what we're saying right now is to generate $15,650 in residential lawn care income, we're going to spend $1,565 worth of gas. I'm not in the lawn care business, so that may be way low, it may be about right, but those but you know your business, so whatever is appropriate in your business, you put in there. Let's say we said a commercial lawn is going to be more, changing it to a dollar more, um, and we're going to do the same thing we did here, and we're going to take uh, the number we're doing, as opposed to the dollar amount, times the $10, Okay, and we were doing many fewer of these, so our um, our income for that was only seventy nine hundred dollars. We only have seven hundred and ninety dollars worth of um, worth of costs involved. Okay, now landscaping. Um, Landscaping, let's say, um, of the money that we're, char we're charging them, the $2,000 that we're charging them to do landscaping, let's say 50% of that is materials cost. Okay, so you've gone out and bought shrubs and flowers and mulch, and um, so you've got 50%, so in this case, we're gonna leave the percentage um, we're, it's going to so now let's do, and we're not going to change how it's calculating it because what it's doing here is it's taking the number we have here, the 50%, and it's taking it times the total revenue. So for a $2,000 landscaping job, $1,000 of that is going to go to materials. So that is probably not an unusual number. In fact, it may even be low, it may be more like 75%. Of it goes to materials. So those, what you're really going to have there is you've had twenty thousand dollars in income. Ten thousand of it's going to go right back out to the the garden shop that you're going to buy the land the landscaping elements from. Okay, so now what we're saying is we have forty some thousand, forty three five in income, and there are actually $12,355 worth of direct expense off of that, in addition to all of our fixed expenses. So now we're losing $12,000. Probably not ideal, because the other piece we don't have in here yet is your profit. Uh, we don't have any, uh, we don't have any income for you, and we don't have anybody that's helping you. We don't have any wages for anybody else. Um, we said right now that you aren't going to have, we said you weren't going to have wages for anybody else. Um, but maybe what we're saying is to do this volume of work, um, you may, it, with the cost we have in here, may not make sense. You would lose money. So let's go back and look at our numbers again. So let's go back and say, well, it's a landscaping business. Do we really need a $1,500 piece of property to run a landscaping business, which could maybe be run out of our home? So now let's go back and say, well, we're instead of $1,500 a month, we're gonna do it out of our house and maybe we're gonna be able to allocate, let's say $250 a month if that. This is where you work with an accountant. I mean, uh, accountants or lawyers, but make sure you work with your accountant to see how much you can allocate of your home expense. But let's say you're able to allocate 250. Your utilities and power now is not going to be, in fact, I can't think of anything you're really going to, maybe let's say $25 um, more than you would have spent if you hadn't been using your home for this. Um, 
Okay, so now we've dramatically decreased our costs. We're not going to have retail tax anymore, real estate tax anymore. Um, so we're going to take out that 2000 We've given up on having a building. We're going to have a lot less money to invest up front because we didn't have a building. So we're actually our payment may be much less. Uh, now we're just maybe buying the equipment side of what we need. We don't actually need the building. So maybe now our interest expense and our um, and our principal expense go way down. So I'm going to going to average this right now. Let's say let's say this goes to 100 and and instead of a $500 payment, now we only have a $250 payment. And we're not going to worry about the amortization right now. We're just going to put a number in there every month, even though we know that the division between interest and principal will change from month to month. But for the projection's sake here, we're not going to, we're going to not include that. Okay, so now after looking at it, just that first down and dirty way, we've evaluated that we really cannot sustain as much upfront investment as we thought we wanted um, to get this business off the ground. So let, now let's go back and look and say, well, okay, now we could, um, we would, we would lose $3,000, still not ideal. Okay, so let's go back again and say, let's rethink our plan a little bit further. Okay, now we realistically, there's not going to be the trash pickup now either as we think through this. Because we're not going to have that building. Okay. Um, let's, we probably still want to keep our website. Um, Maybe we really need to talk to a different insurance company and see if we really need that much insurance. Um, because again, now we don't have the building. Now we're, you know, it's just us getting started. So let's say we're able to do this for um, a substantially less amount of insurance. And again, it's not just a question of changing the numbers. It's changing the numbers based on logic and knowing that that's going to entail going back to an insurance company and saying, if I am doing this, this, and this, instead of that, that, and that, what's that impact going to be in my number? Um, okay, now we didn't have that building. We're still going to have some repairs on our equipment, but maybe we don't have that much, $2,400 worth of repairs on our equipment. So let's set some money aside, maybe more like $75 a month for some general repairs, maybe even replacement ultimately of some different pieces. Um, supplies may still be about that. Um, we've got our, our uh, housing costs and phone. Okay, maybe we can get by with a cheaper plan. Okay. And I'll make sure that we've copied all of this over. Okay. So now, now we've substantially reduced our expenses more in a more reasonable way for a startup for this type of business. And now we're saying, well, we now we're actually going to make sixteen thousand dollars the first year. And keep in mind, we are not working in November, December, January, February, and barely in March. So we're really making sixteen thousand dollars. We're paying back our loan, um, and that's your profit. So that's how much you'll have as income. You're going to pay income taxes on that. But um, but maybe that's a doable number for you. If it's not, then you need to go back and re rethink the business concept and say, you know, one thing you might look at is, you know, are we charging enough? Um, 
in this case, those numbers don't seem crazy, uh, crazy low at all. You know, did we forecast the right amount of, of business? Are we underestimating the amount of business? And go back through and think through that. Um, so, but you, you may find that's a reasonable number. You know, can you, is there room to build? Let's say next year, can you get to the point where you're doing, you're doing twice that? Okay, so you started out with more, you know, you're going to be really busy in your busy times and not so busy in, um, you know, and really busy in your busy times. And so you're going to have to work a lot harder, but maybe it's still doable. And let's see what that looks like in the course of the year. So theoretically, your income could be as high as um, as high as eighty thousand. We've got um, those costs as far as ongoing costs. And uh, that was a those are all percent num num based on our numbers, so they've increased automatically because we increased the numbers. Um, let's say on your fixed expenses, you're going to think fixed expenses might go up. Let's say five percent, just because prices go up. And so we're going to go ahead and project that those numbers went up five percent, and we're going to show. Your costs there, this number is really about the same because that's your payment. Um, okay, and we're not doing the cash flow just for this exercise. I just want to show you how that might change your profit picture. Okay, so let's say you were truly able next year, the second year of your business, to double these numbers. And again, not crazy because you were just starting out. You started out with nothing. You should start out with that full book of business you had. Um, so you might, and you're going to really have to be very busy in that May and June timeframe. But maybe it's not, a, not impossible to have that number be, um, to have that number, your top line number be 87,000. Maybe the mix changes, you're doing more commercial less residential, maybe you're getting some more landscaping jobs, which are a pretty big profit item for you. So then potentially you could do 47,000 in um, net income to you. Now that might be a lot more doable in your mind. That might make this worthwhile to do. So this is what this form is all about. You know, I'm not gonna get into it, but the other thing we could present, we could present, do is how many, if you added employees, what would happen? Because now maybe your volume can go up more. Um, you're going to have some extra costs, but your volume goes up. So this is um, this is how you use this form. So not only is this something that you're using to put together to come up with a number that makes sense for the bank, that you feel is doable, it helps you see the logic of what you're doing and decide if something is really feasible and if it's going to get what you need to earn. I will caution you in this case, you know, we found a loss. We went back and reevaluated, made some, some tough decisions about what we were going to do differently to make that loss a gain. But you have to be realistic. Make sure you're cutting things that are you can cut and still do your business. Um, if the opposite has happened and you get to this point and you look at the number on the very bottom line and it is showing you making $500,000 the first year, I would seriously go back and look at your numbers. That is almost for sure means you've overestimated something. Um, realistically, the first year of a business, uh, breaking even or making, you know, making a modest amount of money that first year is a reasonable number. And then as long as it gives you the opportunity to grow and make a number that makes sense for you, then all of that is is that means your numbers are solid and you've thought through it well. Um, if it's showing you making a huge amount of profit the first year, we hope that's true, but I would not do a business plan that I'm turning into a bank that says that because the bank is going to immediately think you don't know this business very well and you're overestimating the potential income 
and then they're going to be less likely to want to give you the loan. So, um, so those are the things you uh, walk through when you're doing this planning process. And, um, and you know, I, we just sat here and changed things and played with them. Um, it's always a good idea to save your original um, numbers and maybe create a second version so that you can uh, go back and compare them and decide what you want to keep and what you want to um, just toss out. Um, but that's what the purpose is of this particular spreadsheet. When you're finished and you have a number you're happy with, you would um, print this out or attach this and what you're sending to the bank along with your startup costs and along with a narrative, a Word document that's going to, well, we have a template that we're, we've shared with you. And you can, if you go through that template, you'll see there's lots of different questions in a word in, in a format of a business plan narrative. Um, that if you we've talked about the answers to those questions as we've gone through this today, it's going to be where you're targeting your audience and your customer and how you're going to market them and what your operation is going to look like and all those kinds of things. Um, and you'll pull that together in a narrative that explains what you're doing with your business, attach that with the startup costs and your 12 month cash flow, and you're ready to go see a bank. So let's talk about what the bank's going to want from you when you get there and what are the chances that you're going to be able to take that next step and get your business started. So that'll be our next session. Thank you for joining us.